Hey everybody, Ryan back here again. Alright, gonna go over all the games from February 21st, 2021. And to begin, I am sitting fairly close. I'm 11 away, subscribers away from the 50 mark. So, hope, hopefully you'll help me out. Hit that subscribe button. And get me closer to that 50. If not, put me over that 50 mark and start heading towards that 100 subscriber mark. Alright. Thank you ahead of time if you are a subscriber. If not, please hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell to be notified when I drop a new video. Alright, other than that, let's get started with the games from February 21st, 2021. Alright, the morning matinee game was between New Jersey and Washington. Because I, I haven't done a video in over a week, unfortunately, lots of things going on in, this, in my life right now that are kind of intermixing and creating problems for each other. So I had to take a week off from making videos, but... Anyways, this is the first time I've used New Jersey since they came back. So, it's nice to see a New Jersey symbol. Alright, so New Jersey versus Washington. Washington pulled this one out. They won 4-3. And they almost did not win this game. They did not look good to start. But they came back in the second and really in the third. Alright, in the first period, scoring began. Andreas Janssen's third, 9.35 into the first for Washington on the power play from Kyle Palmieri and Pavel Zaka. Excuse me. Then in the second period, at 3.55 in, Jack Hughes fourth from Andreas Janssen and Kyle Palmieri. 2 nothing New Jersey at this point. New Jersey. Come on. Washington has been okay this year, I'm going to say. They've had... I mean, they had... Oh, you can't even say it's injuries. They had a lot of guys out with COVID at one point, but they've been back for a while now, so what's going on? Come on, Washington. <laughs> You're better than this. Anyways, TJ Oshie, 1338 into his second. His third of the year on the power play from John Carlson and Nicholas Backstrom. Then in the third period, Washington took over, especially halfway through. 9.16 into the third. John Carlson's fifth from Brendan Dillon and Jakob Vrana. Then 11.53. TJ Oshie's fourth on the power play from Evgeny Kuznetsov and Lars Eller to take the lead at that point, 3-2. Then 16.56, Alex Ovechkin, sixth of the year on the power play from TJ Oshie and Nicholas Backstrom, making it 4-2. 19.48 into the third with 12 seconds left in the game. Nikita Gusev's first of the year for New Jersey from Damon Severson to make it 4-3, and that would be the final. Gusev has been kind of non-existent for New Jersey this year. I know they haven't played many games because they're out with pretty much their entire roster on the COVID protocols, but even before then, he was not very existent this season compared to last year. So, good to see him get a goal. Maybe this will turn his season around. Hopefully it does. But, we'll see. It's nice to see Oveshkin get a goal, and what would end up being the game winner, too. Because, uh, unfortunately, this guy's kind of been screwed up, be, uh, breaking Wayne Gretzky's record at this point. So, we'll see where he finishes. He'll probably get above... Who's he chasing? Is it Yager second? Yeah, I think Yager's second, huh? Why did I not know this? Usually I know this. Alright. Anyways, but it's good to see how Vesh can get a goal. Alright, here's the stats for the game. Shots were 41-26 in favor of Washington. Face-offs 54-46 in favor of Washington. New Jersey 1-for-3 on the power play. Washington 3-for-4 on the power play. Terrible penalty kill for New Jersey in this game. Penalty minutes, 8-6, New Jersey with 8 hits, 19-12, New Jersey out hitting Washington. Blocks, 15-10, Washington with 15. And giveaway, 7-6, New Jersey with 7. Aaron Dell got the start for New Jersey with 37 saves, 902 save percentage. And I almost said Frederick Anderson, not Frederick Anderson. This is Craig Anderson getting the start for Washington and the win. 23 saves, 885 save percentage. Definitely faced less shots. On to the next game. Montreal versus Ottawa. Ottawa gets the win in overtime in this game. What is going on with Montreal? They have not looked 
like a great team for a little bit now, and they need to figure this out quickly because you don't have time in the short season to be playing around like this. You can't go on those really hot streaks and then extremely cold streaks. That is going to really hurt you. All right. Anyways. All right. All right. So Nick Suzuki begins to score a main 17 into the game for Montreal. Gets his fourth of the year from Josh Anderson. So Montreal starts out the game good. Good start. It's early start too. At 9.47 into the first, uh, Ottawa answers back. Drake Batherson's fourth from Artem Zub, his third assist of the year. I like saying his name, Zub, or Zub. Zub, Zub. I think it was Zub. More fun. Then in the third period, Ottawa takes the lead at 3.33 into the third. Josh Norris deflects the puck into the net for his fourth of the year from Nikita Zaitsev and Brady Kachuk. Then at 14.35, Montreal's Corey Perry scores his second of the year from Jeff Petrie. Yes, Corey Perry scored. Hmm. Still weird to see him on a team other than Anaheim. Anyways, moving on. We go to overtime. This game is tied 2-2 end of regulation, so we go three minutes thirty three minutes and thirty seconds into the five minute overtime. Brady Kachuk scores his sixth of the year from Drake Batherson, Eric Brandstrom. To win the game for Ottawa. Ottawa wins! It's a miracle! Well, not really a miracle. They've actually been looking decently good all year. They just can't stop a puck. Hmm. Oh, and Matt Murray started for him, too. Huh. Ottawa fans, I'll let you go on that one. Shots on goal! Ottawa winning that category 39-32. They have, Ottawa has not had a hard time out shooting opponents this year. They just had no finish. Where you look at our team who can't score very well in Anaheim, who can't even outshoot a Pee Wee team. Let me take that back. A Bantam team. Nah, let's stick with Pee Wee. Anyways, faceoff percentage 55 45 in favor of Ottawa. Uh, power plays were terrible for both teams 0 for 3 for Montreal and 0 for 4 for Ottawa. Penalty minutes 10 to 8. Montreal with 10. Hits 27-25. Ottawa out hitting. Montreal. Blocks 15-11. Ottawa with 15. Goalies. Si uh, no, not goalies. I'm sorry. Giveaways. 16-10. Uh, not in favor of. But Ottawa with 16. You aren't going to win a lot of games without many giveaways. Either team. That's really too many. You want to keep that down to like the 2-4 to four range at most. Probably not even that. You want to keep it down to zero, personally, I think most coaches would say. But goalies for today, Jake Allen with the loss, 36 saves, 923 save percentage. And Matt Murray, 30 saves, 938 save percentage for the win. It's nice to see Matt Murray getting a win. All right, on to the outdoor game in Lake Tahoe. This one went better than the one yesterday did when they had to stop the game and continue late at night. They just moved this one to the evening. Philadelphia versus Boston. And it was a slaughter. Sorry, Philly fans. Philly is considered, I consider them my second team, so it's kind of sad to see them lose this badly. But Boston won 7-3. Evidently, Boston probably wants to play Philadelphia in Lake Tahoe all the time if this is always the outcome. Anyways, this game, the scoring started early. David Pasternak, 34 seconds into the game, his 7th of the year, from Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. 6.41 in the first, Joel Farabee responds, his 8th of the year from Sean Couturier and James Van Riemsdyk. James Van Riemsdyk has had a very good year, by the way. If you have not realized how good a year he has, look at his numbers. He is way above where he normally is at this point. 14:48 into the first, Philadelphia takes their one and only lead of the game. Sean Couturier is third from Kevin Hayes and James Van Riemsdyk. Hey, can see his name quite a bit. Then at 15:27, Boston ties it back up, so less than a minute later. Charlie McAvoy is second from Brad Marchand and Connor Clifton. That's 2-2 at the end of the first. Then it goes off the rails for Philadelphia. Sorry, Philly fans. 46 seconds into the second, 
What is with the quick starts for Boston in this game? 46 seconds in, David Posternox, 8th from Nick Ritchie and Euro. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. Vakakainen? Uh, Vakakainen? Vakakainen. Vakakainen. I have no idea. I don't know how to say that name. Sorry. Fun butchering it. Sorry, head time. Not great with the names sometimes. Then at 16-14 of the second, Charlie Coyle's third from Craig Smith, making a two-goal game at that point. Then about 33 seconds later, 16-47 into the second, Trent Frederick's first from John Moore and Connor Clifton, making a three-goal game. Then at 17-53, Nick Ritchie's sixth on the power play from John Moore and Craig Smith, making a four-goal second and giving Boston a four-goal lead, 6-2. Then, at 12.45 of the third, James Van Riemsdijk's 8th of the year on the power play from Kevin Hayes and Ivan Proveroff to make it 6-3. Then, at 17.04 of the third, David Pasternak completes the hat trick. I believe, I could be incorrect, but I believe that is the first ever hat trick for an outdoor game. Ironically, no fans in the stadium to throw hats on the ice. That sucks. But, David Pasternak's 9th from Jack Studnika. So, Boston wins this one 7-3. Kind of embarrasses Philadelphia out of the building. Well, not, well, not out of the building, but out of the outdoors world. I don't know. We'll move on from that. But Boston outshot them 35-19. Philly has not done well with the shots this year. I mean, they have a good record. They're, they're a winning team. But I don't think I've seen many, if any, games where they've outshot their opponent. Most of the times, it's like that. They have less than 20 most games that I can recall. It's like, you are not going to win unless you start shooting that dang puck at the net. You've got to do better, Philly. Come on. Faceoffs, 52-48 in favor of Boston. Both teams, 1 for 3 on the power play. Both teams, 6 penalty minutes. Hits, 31-23. Philly wins in the hit category. Blocks 16-8, Boston win that category, and giveaway 6-5, Philly was 6. Carter Hart made 17 saves for a 739 save percentage and was replaced by Brian Elliott, 11 saves, 917 save percentage. Then Rask for Boston, 16 saves, 842 save percentage. Rask wasn't even good in this game, he still gets the win, and it doesn't even matter because you know what? Philly just did not play well in this game. All right, then James Van Riemsdyk, who had three points. What the heck is happening? <laughs> I mean, Sean Couturier had two points as well, a goal on assist, but I mean, Van Riemsdyk can't carry this team by himself. Kevin Hayes had two assists as well, sorry. But yeah, so you, you got to do more than that. Pasternak had a hat trick, Marshawn. Let's see, we're at two assists already. Oh, only two assists for Marshawn. First round, only one assist. Wow. Hmm. That's kind of surprising, considering Postanok had a hat trick. Uh, Nick Ritchie, who's having a great year for Boston so far. Goal and assist. Making it 13 points on the year for him. And John Moore, who I completely forgot even played for Boston, had two assists. So did Craig Smith. So, there you go. I mean, what more could you ask? All right, moving on to the last game of the evening from the North Division, Winnipeg versus Vancouver. All right, Winnipeg won this one 4-3. to three. This game just ended not long ago as of this recording. I think like 10 minutes ago. But Winnipeg won 4-3 in overtime. And this is a big game for Winnipeg. You'll see in a minute why. Actually, you can probably already see why. But in the first period, 338 in, Brandon Sutter's sixth of the year from Jordy Ben to take the early 1-0 lead for Vancouver. Then at 1540 of the first, Elias Patterson gets, gets his sixth of the year from Brock Besser and JT Miller, making a 2-0 Vancouver at the end of the first. Great start for a struggling team. Well, a team that had been struggling is now kind of slowly coming out of it, but are still not good in the standings. So I'd still call them a struggling team. Sorry, Vancouver fans. But 
they lead 2-0 at this point. Looking good so far. Second period. First goal as a Winnipeg Jet for Pierre-Luc Dubois, his second of the year from Blake Wheeler and Mark Shifley. Finally, Winnipeg fans are saying, finally he gets his goal. Yay! Makes it a one-goal game at that point. Third period, 5.43 in. Mark Shifley scores his 10th from Blake Wheeler, making it 2-2. Then, at 10.33 of the third, Neil Pionk scores his third on the power play from Pierre-Luc Dubois, first assist of the year, first assist of the Jet, and Nikolai Ehlers. Dubois has two points! His first multi-point game as a Jet, too. That makes it 3-2 at that point. Winnipeg's in the in the good right now. They're doing well. Then at 19-22 of the third, Elias Patterson gets his seventh on the power play from Quinn Hughes and JT Miller to tie the game with 38 seconds left. What? Come on, Winnipeg. But Winnipeg would get it back. Overtime, 27 seconds in. Pierre-Luc Dubois scores his third of the year, second of the game from Mark Shifley and Blake Wheeler. Pierre-Luc Dubois has a great offensive game. Involved in three of the four goals for Winnipeg. Has a goal, uh, two goals, one assist. Mark Shifley, a goal and two assists. Uh, who, I'm sorry, Blake Wheeler, two, three assists in this game. Pretty good game for those guys. I mean, they're not all on the same line, generally. But, good game for them one way or the other. And also... I'm sure most of you know about the incident between Derek Forbert and Nils Hoglander of Vancouver from the last game these two played two nights ago. Well, he had to pay for that because he went out there a smaller player and a young rookie for Vancouver. So Zach McEwen of Vancouver challenges him at 2 minutes 30 seconds of the first. Derek Forbert says yes, they go, they fight, they get it over with, that's it. If you're a young player, realize that if you do something stupid, like what Forbert did going after the guy numerous times in the game because of something you didn't like, okay, that's fine. Go after him once. The guy's smaller than you, younger than you, and definitely not a fighter. I mean, not that Forbert's a fighter here, but he's not going to go. Move on. Get your payback. Take, take your chunk of flesh, as they say. If you want, hit him, hit him. But you don't have to go after him after a whistle in the way he did. And that's why McEwen had to challenge him. Because you can't do that to a rookie. Not going to get away with that with most teams unless it's Detroit, Carolina. But you know what? I give Forbert credit. He took his licks. That was the end of it. There was no more problems the rest of the night. You do that, no problems. If you don't take your licks... <laughs> <laughs> You're going to create more problems for yourself than it's worth. Ask some guys who have done that in the league. You don't take the licks, it, it's going to hurt in the long run. So, good on Forbert for doing it. Good on McEwen fighting for his teammate. There you go. That's the end of it. See you all next time around. All right, let's see his stats. 34-31, Vancouver outshot Winnipeg. And Vancouver also won in the faceoff dot, 58-42. Power plays, 1 for 3 for Winnipeg, 1 for 4 for Vancouver. Penalty minutes, 13-11, uh, Winnipeg 13. Hits, 25-17, Winnipeg with 25. Blocks, 19-10, Winnipeg with 19. Giveaways, 9-5, Vancouver with 9. Connor Hellebuck had, I don't know why I capitalized that B. That's weird. Hellebuck's got the win for Winnipeg, 31 saves, 9-12 save percentage, and Brayden Holtby, 27 saves, 871 save percentage for the loss. There you have it. That's all the games for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell to be notified when I drop a new video. And other than that, make sure to like, comment, share. Let me know what you think of the games tonight. Let me know what you think of Derek Forbert standing up for himself, taking the licks, moving on. You can like fighting or you don't. That's fine. I don't care if you don't. I don't care if you do. I like the fighting personally. I think it's necessary to keep some of the stupid crap out of the game. Because you know what? Forward did the fight. 
great. He took some punches. Oh, well, moved on. He actually fared well in the fight, honestly. I give him credit. He did better than I thought he would do. But he did pretty well. Took his punches. They moved on. That was the end of it. Or he could have not done it, and someone could have gone headhunting for him or one of his teammates later on because of it. What would you prefer? Let's be honest here. <laughs> I don't get this argument of get rid of all fighting. Yeah, I get rid of some of the concussion problems, but you're not going to get rid of the concussions unless you get rid of all physical contact. Because, I mean, there's more concussions from checks than there is from fighting. It has been like that for pretty much all of existence in the sport. I mean, if you look at what they said scientifically, hockey hits are the hardest hits or body checks in the entire world. Even football players do not hit as hard as hockey players all around. There's a lot more force and a lot more scientific crud that I don't understand going into it. But you know what? I've played the game, I've hit people, and I've been hit. It does not feel good being hit, and it feel, it doesn't even feel good necessarily all the times when you hit people either. It hurts you both ways. <laughs> it's, that's just how it works. That's the law of physics. <laughs> I know that much. And you know what? When you hit something that when you're moving, you're going to get some of that reverberation from that too. It's not going to feel great all the time. Yes, adrenaline is going, so you probably won't feel at the time of. But that's why they say after the game, after big heavy hitting games in the playoffs, everybody wears an ice pack. Because you're going to feel it the minute that adrenaline goes away. <laughs> and it's very true. I've, I've been involved with things where I didn't feel it then. Once the game was over, it was like, oh, God, it hurts so bad. What did I do? Why did it not hurt before? Adrenaline does amazing things. <laughs> so, that's how it is. If like I said, if you don't like fighting, that's fine. You don't have to. There's not that much fighting anymore in this league. I mean, they've mostly gotten rid of it. I mean, they let them go there because they knew that the alternative to getting involved in the middle of that as referees before letting it work its way out, it could create more problems than it's worth. So let them go. Do what they gotta do. Five minutes, you're all done. Versus someone's career possibly being ended and numerous people being suspended. I think I'll take the five-minute majors. Thank you. Have a great day. All right, that's it for my rant. All right, see you on next video. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And bye, everybody.